How many times do you watch something and you say, that could not be made today? That, that movie, that TV show, that whatever. So, you know, on, on this channel, we analyze all the woke commercials. So I thought for a little change of pace, it would be good to look back at commercials of days gone by and to try to figure out which one is the least likely to be made today. Which one most transgresses the new woke standard? Before we get started, this video is sponsored by Blinkist. Blinkist brings you knowledge from top nonfiction and podcasts so that you can learn anytime, anywhere. We'll have more from them later. First, let us begin. A very close call. Could have gone either way. It was right on the line. Well, Ferguson's not too happy with it, I can tell you that much. Uh, he's beating him like a rented mule. <laughs> and the ref's just tuning him out. Boy, where do you train to take a beating like that? He said, when's that porch going to get painted? And that litter box, it's been three weeks, three weeks, and you think I could have married Don Hoffman. And it would have hurt for you to say that you love me once in a while. <laughs> so in, initially, I thought there are actually two reasons why you couldn't make this commercial today. The most obvious, of course, is this nagging, terrible wife <laughs> screaming in his face. You're not, you're never allowed to say that. You see, men bad, women good. Men can also become women, which is confusing, but husband, bad, dumb, terrible, lazy oaf, wife, brilliant, wonderful, always charming, always doing everything right. So that's the main reason that you would not be permitted to do such a thing. There's another reason though, where you, you heard that phrase at the beginning, beat him like a rented mule. I don't know. I, I suspect PETA would have something to say about that. The SPCA and a number of other places. So I, I guess though, probably the nagging wife takes pride of place. Okay, next one. Jockey has supported legends like General Patton. Bing there you go. You're not at all. Oh my gosh, no way. To the moon. But imagine Terrible if Buzz had guys. worn today's jockey underwear. He would have planted the flag on all the planets. You're not mankind. Giving America dibs on the entire Milky Way. That's because jockey is quality crafted to last longer, guaranteed. Jockey, supporting greatness. So three reasons here why you could not make this commercial today. One, because white guys are terrible. So you've got General Patton. General Patton, oh my gosh. A speech to the Third Army alone would be enough to get that guy canceled. He was a, a racist, whatever, you know, terrible symbol of American imperialism. And that's no good. And Babe Ruth, you know, he was uh, hanging around with hookers and doing all sorts of, you can't do that. I guess if he were hanging around with sex workers, that would be, if he were sex positive, but I don't think he'd be written that way. And then the third one was Buzz Aldrin, really, really terrible guy because he didn't just spread American power across the globe. He spread American power into outer space. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. He's got the American flag. That is a canceled symbol. You're not allowed to wave that anymore. You have to wave the, the rainbow flag or like the new trans black rainbow flag, what's called the progress flag or the BLM flag or something like that. The American flag, you have to protest and you're not allowed to have it on sneakers and you're not allowed to support it on at the Olympic trials or on a football field. The broader problem is the presumption of that, that last part is that it is good to spread not just America throughout the world, but even just to spread mankind, to go out and explore and conquer. At the end, it says jockey supporting greatness, but greatness is no longer valued. Victimhood and grievance are valued. You used to have a greatness culture, now you have a grievance culture. And whereas greatness used to carry social currency, today it is victimhood and, and grievance. And by the way, even all those glories of American greatness, they are now reimagined to be awful, terrible oppression, crimes, things that we, we can never salute. So for many reasons, altogether, that, that commercial has to be canceled. It's halftime. Well, Clint alone, I think, would get a game. <laughs> no, he's, he still works. in the locker room discussing what they can do to win this game in the second half. It's halftime in America, too. People are out of work, and they're hurting. And they're all wondering what they're going to do to make a comeback. And we're all scared because this isn't a game. The people of Detroit know a little something about this. They almost lost everything. But we all pulled together. Now Motor City is fighting again. I've seen a lot of tough eras, a lot of downturns in my life, and times when we didn't understand each other. 
It seems that we've lost our heart at times. The fog of division, discord, and blame made it hard to see what lies ahead. But after those trials, we all rallied around what was right and acted as one. Because that's what we do. We find a way through tough times, and if we can't find a way, then we'll make one. All that matters now is what's ahead. How do we come from behind? How do we come together? And how do we win? Detroit's showing us it can be done. And what's true about them is true about all of us. This country can't be knocked out with one punch. We get right back up again, and when we do, the world's gonna hear the roar of our engines. Yeah, it's halftime America, and our second half's about to begin. Man, how great is Clint Eastwood? I actually don't think this commercial would be canceled. Clint, he's obviously a little more on the Republican side. He famously yelled at an empty chair at the Republican National Convention in 2012. You know, the, the problems, I guess, of this commercial uh, f- for the woke left is that it says that America can, should come together and move forward and not harp on all the terrible things in the past. And the woke left does want to harp on the terrible things in the past. But it is progressive. And I, and I think in the sense that what this commercial is, is saying is the past really doesn't matter, you know, just forget about it for right now. Let's just move into the future. The future is going to be a lot better. In that way, it's kind of progressive. And so I actually, I don't think that one's going to be canceled. So I got to pick, okay, between the two, you've got the the screaming wife. Now, I guess the the one that you couldn't make today is the the nagging screaming wife. Because the the thing about the, the guys on the moon, it would be problematic and you'd probably have to throw in like a, you know, a half Filipino, like Muslim transsexual midget or something just to make it politically correct and diverse. What the hell is this? But you could, you could generally, you know, there, there is this impulse in progressivism to while they're talking about how evil everything was in the past and how we're in a terrible crisis right now and everything's miserable and we should be really anxious. They, they have a kind of optimism in the sense that they believe we're headed toward utopia and the more, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. So you could make that second one. The Screaming Wife. I don't know that you could. The only way you could make that commercial now is if, if that were considered like a good thing. You know, if it were like, yes, you go girl. You tell that husband. <laughs> yeah, you get him off his lazy rear end. All right. Now, in addition to the old commercials that you, you couldn't make today, my producers wanted to show me some new commercials. I mean, this is, it's obviously in all of these videos, we got to take a look at the commercials coming out recently. And they want me to guess what about the commercial created an uproar, aroused the ire of the woke mob, and got these commercials canceled. Does it happen to you that you want to read a book, but you just don't have the time? Well, instead of having to find the time to read a whole book, a lot of people are short on time now, you can listen to all the highlights in only 15 minutes. How can you do that? Blinkist lets you do it. I've got my Blinkist app right here. There's the uh, homepage here. You've got bunch of cool books you can check out. You got Sapiens by Yuval Harari. That's pretty cool. Lots of other books. And we're talking about bite-sized books, right? So they've got the best insights from 4,500, more than 4,500 nonfiction books. And you can just read it or you can listen to it in 15 minutes, 16 minutes. You really get all this stuff. They also have short casts right now, short casts. There's a million podcasts out there. I should know. I host three of them. And so sometimes people <laughs> need to truncate that information a little bit. Short casts can help you do it. Right now, the first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash Knowles are going to get unlimited access for one week to try out Blinkist. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. That is a seven-day trial, completely free. You can cancel at any time during that period. Go check out Blinkist today. So they, they pulled a couple of these. Let's take a look. I'm Philippe Kahn, and I created the camera phone. I'm Ray Kurzweil. I gave your words a voice. I created the ability to share video. We turned your smartphone into a musical genius. And I turned it into a bank. I created Instagram. I created the first text message. We created Words with Friends. And we created a better way to buy a smartphone. Any phone, any carrier, and all of their plans. With lots of unbiased advice. Because it's all white guys, right? It's got to be... Is that the answer? 
Here we go. Six sexist Super Bowl ads. Okay, so it's I was half right. The guys part is why it was bad. They didn't talk about how it was all white guys. Though I'm I'm frankly shocked by that because it was it's all white dudes in the in the ads who were saying I invented this, I invented that. I just statistically that's just the way it's worked out. And uh, so you you'd think they'd say it's all it's because of white supremacy or something. But no, they left that part out of the uh, criticism. It's just that it's sexist because there's no women. The only women come in at the end. Okay. All right, I'm going to take half credit for that. Wrong. And I bet, by the way, that the woke, the woke people were also upset by it. But okay, I'll take half credit. What's the next one? Clean enough? All right, so there's two ways we could go on this. Both would irritate the, the modern left. I think one is that men are not just automatically expected to clean. You know, they sh- they sh- of course they should be cleaning the house and cleaning all the dishes and cooking all the food. That's, why, how, how dare you suggest that husbands and wives have different roles in the household? Now, that's awful. It's, so it could be that. But what I'm more leaning toward is that the left really hates the idea of seduction. This is why they say that baby it's cold outside is about rape because they're illiterate is why they think that. But because they have no idea that the way that men and women interact historically and naturally uh, is a little bit of a game, you know, a little flirtation, a little seduction. That's a men sort of chase the women, the women sort of modestly resist. And then, you know, who knows? Maybe they kiss at the end as they do at the end of this commercial. But for the, the left today, The way men and women are supposed to react is that if you want to go on a date or maybe smooch a little bit up at Lover's Point, you need to get uh, like a notary there to say, let's just have like a 20 page contract. It says, okay, I formally agree to let this man hold my hand and he can kiss me seven times, but, but if he tries to round second, you know that uh, we're not going to do that. And okay, stand initial here and sign on page 52. And now we have a really formal relationship. Okay. Is that cool? South Park made fun of this in the PC principal episodes where the, the PC principal has to walk around the frat house and collect consent forms <laughs> after, after the guys hook up at night. Whoa, Barker, did you perform cunnilingus? There's a different release form, bro. So I, it's one of those two. I, I think maybe I'm just missing something. I'm going to lean that it's the latter. It's the issue of seduction and consent and arousal. Procter & Gamble attempted to appeal to women in its reimagining of Mr. Clean as a sex symbol, but the spot play... Oh, it was my first guess. Damn, man, I should have stuck with that. The spot played into the idea that it isn't typical for a man to clean and those that do should be praised or rewarded with sex. Okay, all right. Well, hey, ah, man, because I did go with the latter, so I'm, I want half credit again. Stop. I know you're supposed to win or lose, uh, but my gut was right, no more. and then I talked myself out of it. I went, I went a little bit too far, but I'm sure they were bothered by seduction as well. Please post other problematic, lib-triggering commercials in the comment section. We'll see you next time.